we could sort of like really scale impact, develop new audiences. And so she's gonna gonna talk to us about uh, about the. Okay, we're back. Uh, they had a bit of problems with their social media account. Tell me about it. Um, but Emma is signing on now. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I feel like every day I just highlight how not tech savvy I am, um, which is why I have lots of people. Uh, Landy, I see you. She's uh, one of the lovely people who helps me with all my tech. Um, okay. Uh, Mark, hi. So, uh, if you're just joining us, um, today we're talking about the environment. We have uh, Emma Riley from Lonely Whale, which I'm so excited about. Uh, Emma is an absolute warrior for the planet. And um, and so she's gonna gonna talk to us about uh, about the environment. Can I speak French? Oui, je parle le français maintenant. Petit peu. Um. Okay. I uh, I'm just gonna wait. I think we have everyone. Okay, here we go. Emma's joining. We did it. We are live. Oh, we are, we live. are live. Talking about the environment. I'm, How are you? I'm really well. Actually, now I'm really well. I feel like this, uh, all these lives have been a new adventure <laughs> for me, and it is highlighting uh, just how not tech savvy I am. So, but it's you know it's interesting. Like it's so a it's so important to sort of like be in this space. You know, just sort of like live within the chaos that is passing through and I keep I remind I try and remind myself of that every morning because it's really hard to I feel like there's like a lot of pressure to like produce a ton of really good work and get really creative and like it's okay to sort of be but if you're if you are interested in in you know I guess like developing a narrative god like you've put together a really great week of conversations and dialogues oh and whatnot so we're really grateful to be a part of it. Thanks for having Lonely Well as a part of this series. Oh my goodness, really I'm appreciate so it. Honored that you guys are doing it. Um, yeah, it's really fun. So, okay, I'm gonna jump right in and ask you uh, to introduce yourself and just tell us a little bit about what the Lonely Well actually is. Yeah, sure. Um, so my name is Emma Riley, um, and I run sort of creative campaign strategy at. Lonely Well. Lonely Well is a small ocean conservation organization uh, that we launched about five years ago uh, in New York City uh, in the hopes of uh, effectively applying marketing uh, and advertising strategies to ocean conservation efforts in a way that we could sort of like really scale impact, develop new audiences, uh, speak to those that had yet to engage in the conversation uh, and ultimately create a community uh, of individuals that are willing to sort of walk through their daily lives, um, thinking through ways that they could constantly participate in sort of ocean conservation efforts. Yeah, so you guys are behind the Museum of Plastic. Uh, you did a whole campaign to get rid of straws, which was unbelievable. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, the straw stuff. Yeah. yeah. We, uh, so our first campaign was focused on the single-use plastic straw. Uh, and we, uh, we launched it, I think it was 2017 at this point. I can't really remember. Uh, but uh, sort of like I'm sure as you've seen, as, as some of our audience has seen, um, the wave has sort of like rolled over the globe in regards to the single-use plastic straw, and it really sort of sparked interest 
um, and drove attention towards, oh, hey, you know what? We can talk about the ocean on a daily basis um, during like our ever ways for us to engage with the effort all the time. Uh, so uh, uh, last year we launched sort of our second uh, pop culture uh, campaign uh, focused on single-use plastic water bottles, of which the Museum of Plastic is a part. Uh, and we're getting ready to uh, launch our third big pop culture campaign uh, next year. So excited to, uh, to get that going in 2021. We're doing our research and our development right now. And uh, yeah, we'll have some, we'll have some more fun. All right, well, I'm saying it right now publicly. I'd like to be a part of whatever. Yes, <laughs> we would love that. And we met, you and I met in Vancouver at our Ocean Heroes boot camp. We did, yes. I, tra I tracked you down. Yeah, we had like 500 kids on that campus, and we were running around. I know. And I kept saying, Rachel, I'm here. No, Emma. <laughs> <laughs> I'm here. Well, no, now I'm here. Well, no, now I'm here. Like, do you really want to get involved in ocean conservation? You have to go through a boot camp beforehand. No, it, uh, yeah, our ocean. This is a treasure own... hunt for you. Yeah, yeah, it's a treasure hunt. How uh, bad do you want it? <laughs> right, exactly. Do you really want to be an advocate? <laughs> do you? Are you sure? Are you sure? <laughs> um, okay, so I wanted to ask you a couple of questions. I think, I think my first one is that, you know, we're constantly talking about the things that we need to change in the face of our current climate crisis, both only well, I'm always putting out content about it. Um, but what have some of the positive effects of this uh, quarantine been on, on our planet? And, and what can we learn from it? Yeah, yeah, you know, it's been a challenge, hasn't it? Um, so, gosh, we lonely well sort of focuses primarily on sort of that space between consumers and what it is they consume right so choices that are made um behaviors and why behaviors are produced where someone um what is that sort of um what is that tipping point where someone chooses one thing over another and and this time has been really challenging because, uh, I mean, I don't know about Toronto, but I know in California, uh, the Bay Area, where I'm based, uh, is now That's on San shelter Francisco, in place. Oakland, yes. everyone yeah, yeah, know. exactly. Um, is now on shelter in place until May, May 1st. Mm -hmm. uh, I bet the state stays in shelter in place until May 1st, and I bet that's announced like if it hasn't already been announced today, today. Um, but because of that, we, uh, so coffee shops, while they might be open, aren't accepting reusable coffee mugs. Uh, they aren't accepting uh, reusable shopping bags. There's been a push in New York City uh, to reverse uh, the recent single use plastic bag ban that was put in place. So there's been this sort of wave of challenges that organizations uh, like an organization called Upstream, uh, which also focuses on sort of consumer behavior and single use X, Y, and Z item, have really been focused on and are tackling, which has been wonderful to see. Like I'd say that one of the things that has been really inspiring has been sort of like the pulling together of various ocean conservation organizations, primarily focused on single use plastics, such as Upstream, um, in participation with an organization called Break Free From Plastic, which is sort of a convening organization. The work that they've done coming together to sort of outline alternatives um, and overview regulations that are being put in place on a minute by minute basis has been really, really remarkable. Um, I just say that because I think it's really important to acknowledge the good work that our partner organizations are doing during this time. Uh, but you know, we're seeing clean emissions. I mean, we're seeing uh, like emissions reduce. And uh, while there was an announcement a few days ago, um, by the Trump administration to, you know, not that long from now, uh, 
change, roll back the 2012 uh, uh, rule that was put into place for sort of emissions to be at 40, 50, 54 miles to the gallon, back to 40 miles to the gallon, we're still seeing, you know, you and I were chatting this morning about Shanghai and about China and yeah. about those clear blue skies that yeah. they are seeing for the first time in a very long time. So um, there are, again, really great organizations that are heads down during this time, such as NRDC, um, really studying and tracking that commitment to roll back that 2012 law that was put into place yeah. um and well, so i'm up, hopeful up until now um you know we talk a lot about uh cutting back emissions and, and things we can do to help the health of our oceans but it, you know when that sort of what we're going for existed was so far beyond our generations that i don't think people have really had the chance to see um, what it looks like, you know, so you see now the blue skies in China and, and it's, it's an example of what we can actually have. I think it's, it's real concrete proof of the fact mm -hmm. that, you know, if you do A and B, it equals C. If you cut back the emissions, it equals, uh, you know, better air quality. But we were talking about the article of, about the health of people, how many people die in, in China because of poor air quality, I, I mean, around the world. So it is kind of encouraging to see proof in the pudding, if that makes sense. Um, it's, yeah, it's, it's really... Now it's about going forward and continuing that and, and battling against what, you know, could be actually us going into a worse situation than we were in before. Right. Agreed. It's really encouraging. Um, I'd say, again, like the attention that's being paid um, to some of the slight shifts changes in laws and regulations that are maybe moving backwards. The attention that's been paid by other organizations has been super inspiring as well. Um, and the hope, right, is that, yeah, like people, people pay attention uh, to the positives and sort of say to themselves, well, goodness, I could bike instead of drive. Yeah. You know, I've been walking to my coffee shop why would I get back in my car and start driving once the summer months hit? You yeah. know, it's, it's only six blocks away. I think it's really, it's easy in urban environments. The challenge that I, that I see um, sort of like our country, um, and I say that United States, you're in Canada, but at least in the U.S., um, sort of facing in about a month are are um, it is sort of like more suburban areas um, facing some real restrictions uh, in terms of sort of being sheltered in place in their communities in areas where maybe walking to the grocery store isn't as easy yeah. as in San Francisco or New York City. And so I think, you know, I think the, the real opportunity is, okay, well, in those communities, do people sort of engage those changes um, and, like, recognize that it may take, like, an additional 20 minutes, but it's healthy, it's good for your heart, um, and it's really good for the planet to get out uh, uh, and, again, like, maybe walk to the coffee shop or to the grocery store versus drive. It's unique, though, you know, in places like New York or San Francisco, yeah. Um, you do walk, you walk ever so often, but in places even like Los Angeles, that just doesn't happen. So hopefully <laughs> yeah. it, it's weird to see someone on the sidewalk. Like you're right. Like, oh, you know? you <laughs> you're walking. <laughs> Everything. Okay. Do I need to call AAA for you? Yeah. Uh, it's, you know, so even in places like Los Angeles, which is a fairly progressive city and certainly has some. Um, some really inspiring uh, 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 regulations and individuals, organizations working on ocean conservation efforts there. Uh, it's a car city. So, like, what is L.A. going to do after this, you know? Are people really willing to, to take these changes and move forward with them? So, if I'm just coming to the table, I'm watching this, and I, you know, maybe know a lot, maybe don't know a lot. A lot of people, you know, we have our phones, we have a little bit more time on our hands, some of us. 
what what are some resources to educate ourselves uh, going forward? What are the things that we should have educated ourselves on uh, during this time? Yeah. Well, you and I were talking a little bit this morning about like fake news, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, I was one of those people when that dolphin story like came you and up, like, like about the <laughs> I was like, there are dolphins in Venice. What? I was just there last summer. How did I not see them? Um, so, okay. So like really great places not to like follow fake news. Yeah. The New York Times. Um, I am like a huge fan of the New York Times. I'm a huge fan of the Daily, the podcast. Um, uh, I frankly read that and NPR. I stay really heads down on those two, two resources. And I've limited myself um, just in terms of like lifestyle and staying sane um, and allowing myself to like be um, in this time without sort of like stressing out or panicking or like overreacting. I've limited myself to like a morning check-in on the news and an evening check-in on the news. Yeah, and those are sort a, of- A common denominator with everyone I've spoken to about- Right. Like, <laughs> Living are you doing the same thing? <laughs> are you um, like, are you like a, like a once a day or like a twice a day? I, I got in a very dark place. Um, it, it's a rabbit hole and I was, you know, in the rabbit hole. And so now I, once a day at the end of the day, I'll, I'll check in maybe in the morning, I'll just quickly check and then I'll sort of have, I'll give myself 30 minutes to read and educate myself. Cause yeah. I think it's important to be educated. Um, totally. But the news also changes so fast. And so, but there are things uh, as, it, as it relates to the environment that I feel uh, haven't really been changing. They've been an issue before this pandemic. And, you know, so it's, it's kind of um, an interesting time to get to educate yourself on all of those things that maybe uh, in your regular daily life, you don't necessarily have the time to do. So yeah. Um, those are two, yeah, those are two great resources. Um, so I actually saw a question down here and it, it sort oh. of relates to the next thing I was going to ask you, um, about some things that we as individuals can do now in our daily lives. Um, obviously, you know, taking into account that, that some people are in very desperate situations. Um, but someone asked, I've noticed there's so much more plastic packaging because of the pandemic. So what are, what are some things, you know, that we can be doing? Uh, yeah, just as individuals um, that aren't necessarily extreme. I mean, we can talk about the extreme things too, because I love it, but uh, just simple things. Yeah, well, I, so it depends on where you are, you know, um, and I'd say Something I was thinking about earlier today is um, try and just like stay really focused on like your local sort of rules and regulations and politics. So this year is a big election year um, and who you vote for really matters. Um, it matters almost more than If you, oh, sorry guys. No, you're here. Uh, it matters more than anything. It, it really does, you know, uh, and and so if you can try and stay in the loop with any like shifts in terms of when you're voting um, because of what's going on. But who you vote for um, defines the way that your community um, in the future will react and relate um, to sort of the situation that we're in now. Um, I'd say like very simply, um, something that I'm doing in, in our area, um, because we can still order takeout or pick up, um, my partner and I have been trying to um, sort of like eat out from local restaurants, um, like individually or family owned once or twice a week um, during this time. And we'll continue to do that. And instead of having it delivered, um, we sort of safely, um, pick it up from the restaurant. In that, we're able to reduce the amount of plastic that we then take home with us, which you just can't do um, oftentimes if you order through caviar um, or even if you order directly from a restaurant. So it's sort of like a nice break in the day. Um, again, we've been tracking sort of what's going on locally. And so we know that we're able to go to those um, spaces. And, and when we do, um, we don't take the bag, we don't take the cutlery, 
Yeah. Um, I can actually I, on Uber Eats, um, this is a hot tip for anyone who wonders, you can <laughs> opt out of uh, the cutlery and the extras. So, you know, if you, if you do have to order, yeah. you can opt out of that on Amazon. You can, uh, I have it on my uh, story in the tiles. Um, you can opt to send everything in one package. Uh, so it might take a little bit longer, but you can have one box rather than mm -hmm. 27. Mm -hmm. um, and you can opt actually out of, of having plastic uh, wrapping in your box at all, which I think mm -hmm. is really wonderful. And like, I think you bring up like a really good point, which is like, it seems as though like most people have a little bit more time, right? And so right now it's like establish those habits, like spend the extra 15 minutes to figure out how to do something like that, yeah. that you don't typically have when you're sort of like running around, racing to and from work, um, racing to and from dropping off your kids. Take that time to establish that habit now, right? Like circling back to habits, like walking instead of driving or biking instead of, instead of um, driving or even taking public transportation. Again, another habit, like establish how to order without packaging or reduce packaging now so that when life picks up again, you can just do it really quickly and really seamlessly. Yeah, I think it's, it's an interesting uh, thing to get into habits. Um, you know, I know for me, it, it, it was, I mean, it's an odd thing to say, but when I made the shift to having a water bottle that I, you know, always had with me versus ever having a plastic water bottle, um, it, it took me a while to like, I had to remember it every day. And then now I just, I, I don't even think about it. But mm -hmm. it's, it's an interesting time now changing one's habits so that they just become part of how you do things going forward. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, I always say that while we're only individuals uh, and it sometimes feels like we're not making a big difference, if everyone actually did those things, what an incredible difference it would make, so. A huge difference. Yeah, a huge difference. Um, something that we're looking at right now for this upcoming sort of 2021 campaign, um, and I'm probably going to be in trouble for saying that because I like promise, I've now promised our community a campaign, a new campaign in 2021, um, but are like, are just kitchen habits, you know, like how, what, how, what does it mean to like be in your kitchen um, and like make a meal? Um, we're sort of studying that right now. It's fascinating, sort of social science, right? Like how, how does one move about their kitchen? What's in an average American um, kitchen? Um, what products? What products are used for which meals? Um, single use in particular. So, um, yeah, healthy habits, I think, you know, and, and taking this time to establish new ones. Yeah. Super um, exciting. So I have one... Uh actually really great question as it relates to what we were talking about before and I encourage everyone I always say this get out and vote educate yourself vote I, you know regardless of who you vote for I mean it's one of the beautiful things about our democracy is you have a choice so uh, but just vote um, but I was asked what's um, a good resource to use uh, for research uh, with local politicians and how they prioritize climate change. Is there a resource that sort of talks about politicians and what they prioritize? Yeah, that, so really great question. Yeah. Um, really important question um, because both like it's hard to find resources. Um, but well, it's super, super, as well. right, right. I mean, there's so much online. Um, so I like, I just absolutely love um, the National Caucus of Environmental Legislators. So NCEL, uh, Jeff, their executive director, Jeff Mock, very good friend of Lonely Whale, uh, Lonely Wells. Um, the organization actually participated uh, in our hydrate campaign um, with uh, various legislators uh, across the country uh, sort of championing no longer using single-use plastic water bottles, which was like great to see. Um, but just a really awesome organization um, that uh, uh, 
tracks, manages, can provide resources um, for at least sort of um, U.S.-based um, voting efforts, individuals that are focused on um, the most important issues to us. Um, I will say that um, an organization I mentioned earlier on our call, Break Free from Plastic, um, is uh, sort of a convening organization for a handful of organizations working around the world on reducing uh, single-use plastic um, and and more, right? So they're working on um, sort of uh, um, uh, health uh, and like the humanities in regards to plastic production. Um, they work on sort of various efforts in regards to recycling. Um, and so it's single use plastics and sort of the world at large. And it's a, they're a really great organization that can connect you locally um, if you're not in the United States yeah. to orgs that, um, that probably know what's going on in your area, you know? Um, they probably can tap into um, the good and the bad and certainly act as a, as a resource for some of that research. I love that. So we're going to be putting um, all these resources in the comment uh, section. So you yeah. guys can all check that out. And um, Emma, thank you so much for it. I, oh, thank you. It's so you good just to see your face. I love listening to you. I, I, it's so good to see your face. And thank you so much for doing this like week of just like short inspirational conversations and, you know, just friends of yours. And we're just like so grateful to be a part of it. This was a real blast. It's the first of like a live series that we'll be doing on our channels as well. So maybe we'll like pull you into that later uh, this <laughs> month. Yeah, that'd be really fun. I've, but I've so... now figured, mostly figured out the tech behind it. So I <laughs> say with confidence that I will be there. <laughs> I'm like, ha I like can't figure out the lighting though. I'm like, heck and light, it's too much. It's only 9.30 on the West Coast. I know. Uh, so good friend. to see you, Rachel. Thanks so much for having us as a part of this. Oh, my pleasure. Thank you. <laughs> Alrighty, take care. Bye. Bye, guys.